Now that we've gone through the red and green stages of our test of written development, let's focus a little bit on the refactoring stage. And first I want to focus on the view for our page that we just created. And you might be thinking, well, that's not too line long. That's uh, eight lines of code. But uh, Rails actually provides us some mechanisms to make this even easier and more concise. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what Rails calls a partial, and by its name, it um, suggests what it does. We're only going to do a part of our view, not the whole view. And the way we do that is it's going to be Ruby code, and we want its output. So we're going to do the pseudo element with the equal sign in there. And we're going to say render, and we're going to give it this variable user from our loop right here. And what we're going to say is we've got a variable user and we expect to display it um, multiple times and maybe even multiple times from different views and so rather than having that code repeated throughout all those views we want to encapsulate it into a, a single location so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file for this partial and so we'll create new app use users and the name of the partial is important since this variable user is of a class called user not because its name is user but because of the class is user the partial that it's going to call is also user and so we, you might think it'd be user.html.erb uh, but it turns out that uh, the way that Rails works is that all partials have a special first prefix character of underscore. So it'd be underscore user.html.erb. And so now we've got that file in here. And what we want to do is go to this line, which represents rendering that user. We're going to take it out of here and we're going to put it in our partial. And so now, what's going to happen is each time through this loop, we're going to call this partial, and we're calling this partial again because it's of the, the object that we're get, passing to render is a user object, and so it calls underscore user. And in there, this partial creates a new variable called user. It's different from this variable, and I'm going to make that really clear by going here, and I'm going to change this from user to you just so it's really clear. Okay. So now we have you here and we have user here. So the only way that user could exist here is that this partial created a new variable, new object called user. And this object is called user because the partial name is user. And so now we have this partial rendered here you and it's going to call this partial each time through the loop. So let's Go ahead and save this, save this, and go ahead and run our server. And what we will see here is now that that's up, we can go ahead and go to our web page and reload the web page, and nothing changed, which is good. Our partial worked. And you might be saying, I don't know if that really was that much of a savings. And you know what? I might uh, agree with, with you there. But here's the, the next step here. Uh, the partials that Rails is able to render know when they're given a singular item, like we have here, and know when they're given a collection of items, an array or, or, or something like that. And for collections, it will automatically iterate through that collection and call a render for each item. So this pattern right here where we had an iteration where all we do is call a render is, is much more verbose than we need. What instead we can do is we can just say, I want to render all of these users right here. And now Rails is going to say, oh, well, that's a collection of user objects, I'm going to call that same partial 
that we have in here, but I'll do it automatically so we don't have to be explicit about it. So we can get rid of all those and now our view can look like this. Again, our object name is at users. The only way this variable user has been created is because each time through each element in this user's object, this partial is going to create a new object to represent that. So we've saved these two files. If we go back to our web page and load it, again, we see that there is no change in the website. So this is, is perfect from our visibility standpoint. We haven't changed what it looks like. The last thing then that we should do is that we should quit our server and go through our tests because you can always make a change that looks right on the web page but find out that it doesn't make a change. And that's the whole key of the refactor. We've got these tests in place so that we know even if we make a change, it's not going to change any functionality. Our tests have passed, our visual inspection has passed, so this is our first refactoring that makes it a little bit easier to use our code than before.